Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a charcoal drawing of a giraffe, a slightly smaller but very detailed drawing. And I'm going to use a combination of Kohino soft charcoal pencils and Kohino silky black pencils. I'm going to start with a sketch. The composition is going to be very simple. It's going to be like a portrait of an animal with the giraffe's head taking up the biggest part of the paper. The paper is around 5 times 9 inches in size, so slightly smaller piece of paper, but like I said, I'm going to try to make it very detailed with some interesting textures. I'm going to have a little bit of background as well. I'm going to draw some clouds because this is kind of an upshot. We're looking at the giraffe from down below, and the, head is, uh, the uh, giraffe is looking down, kind of uh, tilting its head in a funny way. So it's an interesting, it's hopefully going to be an interesting animal portrait and I haven't done uh, any wildlife in a while now. I've done a similar drawing before but not for YouTube so I thought this might be interesting for some of the viewers. So like I said I'm mostly going to use these Kohino pencils. For erasing I'm going to use um, Needed eraser, I, I don't know if it, it's either a Kohinoor or a Faber Castell needed eraser. And for some, the, for erasing some of the finer details, I'm going to use a Kohinoor pencil eraser. And for blending, I'm going to use uh, some brushes and tutilians. Now, here at the top of these horns or horn like shapes on the head, I don't know exactly what they are, but um, there's a little bit of longer hair, longer fur. And that's why I'm pulling slightly longer strokes here at the top, trying to imitate the appearance of that longer fur. Now the hair, or the fur rather, on the on the animal's head, on the ears, uh, on the on the muzzle, and elsewhere is going to be pretty uh, pretty uh, short for the most part. There's just a few a few of these areas where it appears to be a little bit longer. So the trick, I think, will be trying to imitate the texture of a short fur. And I already have an idea about how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to try to explain it to you as best as I can because I think it's not very difficult. So here uh, on the inner part of the ear, there's going to be a very dark area, a shadow area. That's one of the darkest, darkest bits uh, in in this drawing, and I'm going to draw this with my soft charcoal pencil. But uh, just in front of it, there's an area of slightly longer and lighter fur, which I'm going to have to refine using erasers a little bit later. But right now, I'm trying to soften these marks a little bit using a tortillion. I also put down some of that soft charcoal pencil at the top uh, around these horns uh, where the fur is also going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to try to use the I'm going to try to use the those Kohino silky black pencils for the most part for the shading and the textures and the details, but I'm going to try to use the soft charcoal pencil sparingly for the for some of the darkest areas because uh, that way I will uh, I'll be able to create uh, a lot of depth and volume in my in my subject make it look more realistic because that range of value is very important but uh, you shouldn't overdo it with your darkest darks and your lightest lights you want to have that, uh, a nice range of value and you usually want to use those darkest darks very sparingly but that depends on the type of drawing that you're doing but here here I'm going to try to use them sparingly and um, um, I'm going to have some darker darker bits like around those uh, spots and uh, in some some of the shadow areas like under the uh, under the head around the neck but we'll see I'm just going to try to control the amount of value here I pulled some uh, highlights on those uh, lighter hairs in front of the darker darker shadow area on the inside of the ear just to um, <clears throat> refine the appearance of that slightly longer and slightly lighter fur in front of the in front of that darker bit. Now here I have a little bit more of that longer fur on these horns, 
and uh, to, to draw this I have to pull short marks, short strokes uh, just to imitate the texture of that fur there is no easier way to do this I just have to do this patiently and I have to try to make these marks in the direction in which the fur flows so that's one of the things that I always repeat uh, when um, when drawing furry animals or wildlife if you want to draw a realistic looking coat or realistic looking fur you need to try to make sure that the length of the fur and the direction of the fur matches the, the direction and the length of your pencil strokes and um, if the fur is a little bit longer you need to you need to make longer strokes, lo longer marks and if the fur is uh, going in one direction you, you need to make sure that your strokes are in the in that direction because if you just uh, start scribbling all over the place and shuffling your pencil all over the place it's not going to look very realistic now of course uh, shading the larger shadow areas is far more important but here I think um, uh, because I don't really see a distinct portions of a lighter and darker value where I can separate the light side from the shadow side I decided to go in with the details immediately and the eyes are really dark here so again I'm going to use that charcoal pencil the, uh, the darkest thing that I have and I'm going to make them almost completely dark because that's the way they are in my reference and I'm going to draw these uh, eyelashes as well Just uh, blend that a bit with a uh, tutelian. Uh, sometimes you will experience a little bit of difficulty blending these uh, larger, darker areas with a tutelian because most of the blending tools, when you try blending charcoal, especially if you want to create large, dark areas, most of the blending tools will tend to make them a little bit lighter so uh, there are a couple of things that kind of help but brushes generally make things a bit lighter and so do so, so do some other blending tools but your finger is actually a great blending tool for that type of stuff because because of the texture of your finger uh, <clears throat> and the oils in your skin it tends to make the charcoal stick to the paper and make the darker surface is really dark but I can't really do that here because all of the details are really small so I can't really uh, use my finger for blending those so I use the tutelian but you, you, you can still use your tutelian pretty effectively you just have to uh, make sure that you have a sufficient amount of material on it so when the tutelian picks up enough of the charcoal it's gonna keep burying that charcoal in, in, in the paper into the paper and it's going to create a pretty dark area. Here we have some kind of uh, wrinkles around the eye area uh, probably some muscles uh, around the eye and the forehead area some wrinkles in the skin so I uh, created some darker lines in between those and I put some highlights on top of them using a pencil eraser and now I'm moving on to the other ear uh, doing the same thing first, uh, drawing these darker bits and making sure that I just leave a little bit of room for, for these lighter hairs which I'm going to refine a bit later and then I'm using my tutelian to shade a little bit because I, I, want, uh, I want a nice transition between the head and the ear so that I have a nice clean edge between uh, that, um, how would I call it, the eye area the temple area I guess and the ear which is further back and is also uh, facing away from the light source and is a little bit darker these um, the these bony bits above the eyes that eye socket area is kind of protruding outwards it, that, that's just the shape of the giraffe's skull I guess and uh, that because they're protruding they're going to be a lot lighter the, the the part of the ear which is where it joins the head 
is uh, is in the shadow is a, is a little bit darker so I have a nice transition there a nice contrast and I'm trying to capture that and also it, it helps me explain the it helps me explain the shape of the animal's head as well and there's uh, th this fur here at the top of the head is gradually becoming shorter and shorter and there's also some kind of bulging part here in the middle in the middle of the head I don't really know what that is I don't really understand the animal's anatomy that well all I see is that this is another area of a slightly longer fur and the fur here in the middle is a little bit darker and a little bit longer and it's kind of getting shorter and shorter and shorter towards the nostrils and the mouth area and of course uh, to, towards the eyes and the ears so I'm gonna have to try to imitate that texture now it's probably a good time for me to talk about that I, I'm starting to work on some of these spots and obviously uh, trying to imitate the pattern but I should probably say a few words about uh, drawing this short fur. I don't really know how much the camera will capture it, but the thing is that um, uh, you have to allow the pencil to work for you. And that's one of the things that I always say. Uh, the pencil naturally produces some texture, and you can use that texture to create all kinds of details or an illusion of details. So if you're trying to draw fur, for example, and you have really short fur, um, you can just drag a pencil over the pen paper, it will produce a rough texture and you just leave that texture, you uh, don't blend it in or if you have to do some blending, you go over it again with the texture and uh, with, a, with a pencil and it creates some texture and uh, you just leave that texture and you use it to create that illusion of detail, to create that illusion like you uh, put in a lot of work drawing all that short hair and now uh, here the tricky bit is that we have an area of slightly longer hair right next to it so what you need to do is you need to try to make a transition uh, from those uh, from that texture that you created just by dragging the pencil to really really short small marks which you will draw uh, by uh, by using your pencil and by uh, drawing uh, short tapered strokes or maybe uh, dot like marks so that's what you want to do in order to uh, not, not just draw a realistic looking short fur but to draw realistic looking transitions between areas of slightly longer fur and those of very very short fur. Uh, giraffes also have uh, some kind of a short mane so I'm going to draw that here as well but because uh, this uh, hair is a little bit darker and it's also closer to the neck area there's going to be a bit of shadow there so I used a soft charcoal pencil again for that of course when I go over it with a brush it gets a little bit uh, lighter and now another thing I'm going over those areas uh, where I drew those uh, where I drew that shorter fur I'm going over that with a brush and you shouldn't worry about a brush ruining your texture because uh, what brushes do they soften the marks a little bit but a lot of that texture still remains so Brushes are very useful tools when drawing fur, whether you're trying to draw longer fur or shorter fur, it doesn't really matter. They just soften the marks a little bit and they create a more realistic look and they add a little bit more volume and a little bit more fluffiness, if you will, uh, to, to the fur, especially the areas of longer fur. And uh, they also add a little bit of value in the process, that's something that you also need to be aware of that things are going to be getting a little bit darker when you use your blending tools but uh, you need to take that into account and you shouldn't worry about uh, brushes destroying your texture because they won't do that they will just soften it a little bit and if you feel like you need to create a slightly more coarse appearance of the texture uh, you can always go back and go over it uh, with your pencil a little bit more creating a little bit more of that rough texture um, you can also add a little bit to that texture by using a pencil eraser by creating some lighter marks but we'll get to that later right now as you can see I'm working around the muzzle area or the snout area I never know which animal has a snout and which one has a muzzle so somebody in the, in the comments will no doubt correct me 
or hopefully they will. Uh, so here I'm drawing some more of these larger, uh, larger rectangular spots on the neck, and you can see that these uh, spots uh, they're kind of smaller and smaller uh, on the head area, and they're getting larger and larger on the neck area and on the on the the giraffe's body. So it's a very interesting looking pattern that I want to try to imitate uh, if I want to draw a realistic looking a realistic looking giraffe. Right now I'm just putting in the darker areas and also I put in a little bit of that darker shadow area under the head where the head joins the neck so I'm already defining some shadow areas before I refine some of the textures. Uh, but I'm going to have to refine the texture of those uh, larger, darker patches of fur on the neck a bit more because right now they look a little bit too smooth and I don't, don't like it. It doesn't really look like fur. I mean, you could leave it like that whenever you're drawing animals. It's up to you how detailed you want to make the, the drawing of an animal. You can just focus on the larger, uh, larger shadows, larger relationships between the colors but you can also make it a little bit more detailed and interesting. I personally love textures. I like creating a lot of rough textures uh, because I think they uh, they entertain the eye and they uh, trick the eye into thinking that they're looking at something really detailed and really realistic and textures are a way for you to create a drawing that looks or that seems photorealistic even though you didn't really spend uh, nearly enough time to make it look uh, photorealistic. So a drawing like this for example takes only about an hour and a half to do because it's maybe a couple of hours depending on how quick you are and how detailed you want to make it but it's not a very difficult drawing even with this level of detail. Uh, obviously, if you wanted to make it more detailed, you could. You can always spend a little more time refining the textures and things like that, but um, that's not really what I'm going for here. I'm going to use my pencils to create those textures and to create that illusion of detail. And like I said, I'm sorry the camera doesn't really capture all of these details. Sometimes, um, especially because I'm using this uh, time lapse in uh, in some parts of the video process. Sometimes it's a little bit faster. Um, you can't really pick up on all of these details, but the, these drawings usually look a lot more detailed in real life. And uh, now I did a little bit of work on the background. I added a bit of value to the background, just a little bit, just to make it a bit darker than plain white. Um, right now it's not adding much to the drawing. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Make it a, a little bit smoother using my brush. But later I'm going to add some details to the background. Right now I just want to focus on my main subject and make sure that I go back and work around uh, the edges because I want to have a clean uh, I want to have a clean edge between my my subject and the background. That's very important and uh, because you always when you work on the background you always spoil the edges a little bit that's uh, unavoidable so uh, if you've done uh, if you've done some work on your main subject first you need to go back and clean up or refine some of the edges but right now I'm doing that using one of those harder pencil I'm going in and maybe drawing some finer details uh, around the edges and also on those patches of uh, where I'm trying to, and also here on the main, where I'm trying to refine the texture a little bit and make it look like more like actual fur. And uh, occasionally I'm just dragging my pencil and adding a bit of random texture here and there. That's one of the things that I like to do. I like to add a bit of random texture. And like I said, you can also add a bit of texture using a pencil eraser. You just draw some lighter marks here and there. So right now I'm going back in and defining some of the lighter areas on the giraffe's head, trying to uh, increase that range of value a little bit uh, so that I can create a little bit more depth and volume. I want to 
make it uh, feel like that uh, animal's head is really sticking out in front of the neck if you know what I mean, I want to uh, make that look a little more three-dimensional if possible and that's why I'm doing a little bit more shading on the neck trying to make it a bit darker so that the head would pop out in front of it I'm also doing a little bit of work on these darker patches of fur, these larger darker spots uh, so that I would uh, refine both their outer shape and also their texture and a bit more uh, erasing on the head as well uh, just pulling some highlights on, on some lighter areas of the giraffe's face to make it look more three-dimensional and now I'm just finishing uh, the work on the background I'm just going to add some random clouds here in the back I'm not trying to make it look like the giraffe's head is up in the clouds I'm trying to make it look like this is an upshot and uh, uh, we are looking at uh, giraffe and giraffes are obvi obviously very very tall animals we are looking up at the giraffe and that's why we can see the sky uh, the sky behind its head so just a few dabs uh, with a kneaded eraser and that will create some interesting looking clouds I don't really need to do too much more because I don't really want to overdo the background I don't want to focus on the background too much I think it looks good enough the background should be simple that's how I planned it anyway but uh, I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and put down some finishing touches uh, on this drawing and I'm gonna put my signature in the lower left corner and that's it if you want to see longer videos, full length videos with a lot of narration, you should check out my Patreon. Here on YouTube you should subscribe and check out my other videos. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Also give me a like and comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.